Okay, the electromagnetic radiation lab. So part A, you're looking at the continuous spectrum of light, which comes from looking at white light through a hand spectroscope, which looks like this. This is the end that you look through. This is the end. If you see this little slit right here, that is what gets directed at the white light. The white light could come from going outside and just using the light that's outside, um, pointing it up at the sky, or you could point it at the white light that's coming from the lights in the ceiling, okay? Now, there is a right side up and a right side down. So a lot of these have um, little stickers on them that show you the right side up. Or if you're looking through here at um, the, uh, the wavelength scale that's here, it should be numbers like um, 4, 5, 6, 7, which stands for 400 nanometers, 500 nanometers, 600 nanometers, 700 nanometers. The numbers are going to be right side up or upside down. And you would just flip it over if it was upside down, okay, so that you could see it right side up. Just make sure that you're looking through this end. This is not the correct end to look through, okay? Um, <clears throat> when you point this little slit at the white light, you will see a rainbow all across the wavelength scale. It will have a continuous um, sequence of color, and you're going to sketch the rainbow that you see here where it says continuous spectrum white light data okay it should be uninterrupted color there should not be any large black regions okay that's why this is called continuous spectrum then what you're gonna do is I have neon krypton hydrogen and helium lights that look like this and they are clearly marked in the classroom okay you turn them on right here and this light is going to give off a distinct color I didn't leave you a blank to write the distinct color for the light so what I want you to do is just make a little note off to the side of the lab as to what distinct color you observe like was it orange was it purple was it reddish pink it's whatever it appears and you write it down okay you're not going to do argon so tr um, cross out D for argon okay when you observe the distinct color that they give off, then what you're going to do is pick up your hand spectroscope. You're going to point the slit at the light that is on, and all of the other lights will have to be out, and I'm going to close the blinds because it'll, dis it'll disrupt your data. You should see the line spectrum for hydrogen and helium and krypton and so on, and they will be discontinuous spectrums. That means... Um, you're going to see re large regions of black separated by little tiny bands of color and they will all look unique okay you really don't want to have more than one of the lights on at a time just in case you happen to look at another one on accident if you're pointing in the same direction so um, that's what you're going to do and then when you're done with that you're going to answer all of these post laboratory questions okay and um, I've answered a lot of the vocabulary here. Some of the vocabulary is also in your chapter handout. Um, a couple of things where you might get confused. Number four, when it asks for the six primary colors, I've already listed these six primary colors for you in parentheses that I want to be put in order. You'll use that for five and six as well. Um, what else? Number nine, how many photons are emitted when an electron drops from an energy level? If one electron drops, one photon is emitted. If 10 electrons drop, 10 photons are emitted. Okay? And then I believe that is it. Number 11, when it asks you to decide whether metric ruler, electronic balance, or digital clock are continuous or quantized measurements, remember, quantized are distinct levels. So, like, if I'm increasing by numbers like 1, 2, 3, that's quantized. Okay? So keep that in mind. And then I guess that's about it, okay? Um, have fun.